action. And here we come through. First one through the hatch is going to be Nicole Mann, Commander of Dragon. And now the first Native American woman to live and stay aboard the International Space Station. All hugs and smiles going around. Next one through the hatch is Josh Cassida, the pilot of Dragon. He's getting his welcome and hellos from the crew aboard International Space Station. I feel very proud to be on board the space station and certainly to represent Native Americans and indigenous people on board. I think it's important that we recognize that there are all different types of people on board the International Space Station, not only from different countries, but from different backgrounds and different nationalities. What that does is it just highlights our diversity and how incredible it is when we come together as a human species, the wonderful things that we can do and that we can accomplish. There were some boards at NASA with uh, people that have our indigenous background or that are natives that have come together and that have followed on the mission because they heard that a Native American is going to space. And that has excited them. I think that's great. It's good for the community, hopefully inspires young children, and hopefully it allows them to open up their mind and see the incredible things that we're doing on board Space Station. You got this side. Yeah. You got the middle. Now you gotta pull the sleeve. How are we doing? The only personal thing uh, that I brought in the, along those lines is a dream catcher from uh, my mother, and that's something that I've always held dear as a child. Uh, I know it helped me through some uh, tough times as a child when um, I would have a hard time going back to sleep. And so I think that the strength I find in that is a gift from my mother. It's the strength to know that I have the support of my family and community back home and that when things are difficult or things are getting hard or I'm getting burnt out or frustrated, that strength is something that I will draw on to continue towards a successful mission. Translate out to a simulated ELC-3 SASA worksite. And uh, are you familiar with the translation path or do you need help? Um, no, I should be good. Remind me of my mile marker that I head up at. 8420. 8420, thank you. I brought it out. It's a small, it's a very small one because space is uh, limited on the International Space Station, but it's, uh, it's pretty amazing in microgravity um, because it just floats and the, and the feathers kind of go every which way. And so I have that in my crew quarters every night, uh, you know, to remind me of my family and my community. What's up? How's it going? How's it going, dude? Good. Hello. Hey, how you doing, man? I think the space exploration does a lot for us looking beyond low Earth orbit, but it also does a lot to benefit humans on Earth. I think it's part of our human nature to explore, uh, to investigate, to conduct scientific research. That allows us to expand, to grow, and to learn. Hopefully that will help us back on Earth and in our struggles with poverty and with the changing uh, world and atmosphere that we live in. The more that we can learn about our planet Earth, the better we can do to take care of her.
Um, certainly as a child, as a little child, I was fascinated with space and the stars, and I really liked adventure and exploration. But I had never really understood what an astronaut did, um, who became astronauts, what it really took to become an astronaut. Unfortunately, in my mind at that time, it was not in the realm of possibilities. Uh, fortunately, though, later on in my career, as I started to do some research to see what other options there were for me in my career, I looked at becoming an astronaut and realized that those opportunities were available, and that's when I really set my sights on becoming an astronaut and flying to space. Right. It took a lot of love and dedication to get here today and we are still learning and innovating from each launch. From the beginning Dragon was designed to eventually fly people. The it's difficult to explain because the emotions are absolutely overwhelming. It is an incredible scene of color of clouds and land, and it's difficult not to stay in the cupola all day and just see our planet Earth and how beautiful she is and how delicate and fragile she is against the blackest of black that I've ever seen space in the background.